Hello viewers, welcome to this edition of Business Connect. This is Kolkata and I am there, Sandeep Chakraborty, your host for this episode. Today we have with us Dr. Dilip Kumar, who is one of the renowned cardiovascular surgeons and interventional cardiologists from the city of Kolkata. Today we will we'll ask him a set of questions to know about the current situation in the world of interventional cardiology. Sir, welcome to this edition of Business Connect. We are here to hear from you in this edition of Business Connect. Sir, some, there are some questions we would like to ask for you on behalf of Business Connect. Please walk us through your overall corporate journey. Also shine some light on your profile. So, well, uh, after getting the basic degree of cardiology and basic training from IPG Mar Kolkata, I joined Naran Hurdwalaya for uh, three years. So, from 2007 to 10, I worked in Narana Hurdialaya, Kolkata unit. And then for a brief period of time, I was in Netherlands, in Eindhoven, to have my advanced international cardiology fellowship. And then I joined Medica after coming back. And since then, I am in Medica and uh, for the last th four years, I am the director of cardiology here. And uh, we have uh, been able to establish our center as one of the one of the best centers in India in uh, complex coronary work, pediatric cardiology work, structural heart interventions, electrophysiological procedures. So, it has been a very, very gratifying journey till now. How have advancement in interventional cardiology and structural heart impacted patient outcomes in the past decade? What are the, some of the most promising innovations you have witnessed? So, uh, last one decade, is I think it can it uh, we can say it as a inflection decade inflection decade in the uh, field of interventional cardiology. So before that there were many you know situations where we used to just say that nothing could be done, uh, patient with terminal you know heart failure stages, or the patient has a very poor LV function with comorbidities, uh, severe critical valvular diseases. We had no option. We had only two three drugs and you very limited devices to offer, but last one decade has seen so many developments uh, uh, to you know uh, say a few we have got now uh, complex coronary interventions with multiple uh, ablation techniques they have come like rotablation or batalithectomy now has printed more in Indian market. Also we have got support devices like Impella. So, if your patient is very critically ill and uh, you have to perform some procedures sometimes the patient's mortality in cath lab is very high if we go without a support system. But with Ampella, which gives you a kind of, it is just a mechanical heart support. So, uh, the Impella will take over the cardiac function and provide support to heart while we do the our, our coronary work. And this has really changed, uh, you know, lives of many patients who were almost unsalvageable. And uh, we have also seen a lot of developments on percutaneous valvular platforms and uh, you know uh, in this field we had uh, uh, like transcathetic aortic valve replacement almost taken over so many you know bad patients who used to go for surgery with high mortality now tower is being done and patients are improving. Also uh, transcatheter leak you know clipping procedures be it mitral clipping be it tricuspid valve clipping. So, these procedures are also making good you know uh, inroads in Indian healthcare. Uh, they have been quite successful in western and you know uh, you know American healthcare delivery because of the high costs it was a little bit little bit less you know uh, being used in India. But nowadays they are making inroads good progress and I am very hopeful next decade will be the decade of uh, you know cardiovascular services all you know a spectrum of cardiovascular services coming to India and India being the focus of the cardiac procedures. Given your role as the director of cath lab, what are the current challenges in ensuring the highest standards of care in complex cardiac procedures? So, your responsibility you know increases multiple you know times once you become director of cardiology or you, you, you take a position of leadership uh, anywhere you know in any field. So, coming to cardiology and healthcare it even more promising and even more challenging rather I can tell you. And uh, 
since uh, I took over, uh, it's been quite a good gratifying journey. We have been able to place and uh, kind of establish our center as of national repute. So we are thriving to make our center as a center of excellence and training. And uh, so many doctors from eastern part of India, they come to us to learn the, uh, the techniques of uh, you know device implantations, heart failure management, uh, complex coronary intervention, structural heart intervention. So we are a kind of pioneer in doing all sort of workshops uh, in Eastern India and uh, many things we have done which were done for the first time in India even like uh, we uh, threw a large board access workshop and uh, conference which was kind of its unique concept of uh, giving idea about how to make a safe large board access and coming out and this was for the first time we did and it was a huge success. So teaming you know teaming up with best of the uh, professionals in this field and taking this entire cardiac sciences, medical and cardiac sciences to a new level, this is our challenge and for this we need good manpower and a very strong support system. So we have a, a 7 to 8 cardiologists working together in a very you know a close manner and a cohesive manner. We have three cath labs, they, are, they all are state of art and we have a very good supporting team, uh, cath lab technicians, brothers, sisters, they are all very highly trained and uh, we work almost 24 7. And uh, the next level what I am thriving is, we would like to venture into those procedures which are not done in this part of the world. like. Uh, uh, you know the clipping procedures and uh, further valvular procedures, some lasers. So we are looking forward for making our team more trained and uh, the workshops training to next you know level and research activities we are going to increase further. What is your role on the role of artificial intelligence and machine learning in a diagnosis and treatment of cardiac conditions? Artificial intelligence is writing a new kind of uh, history in world, isn't it? So, and uh, healthcare is not untouched. So, healthcare is uh, seeing more and more AI being used. You see many of uh, your friends, our friends they are using Apple watch mm. and that is extremely sophisticated AI based healthcare solutions as well. So, these patients, some of the young fellows come to me uh, showing that his Apple watch has shown some uh, arrhythmias and it has. Uh, it has given an alarm about some of the arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation and then we really see yes indeed he has some problem. So this is the you know AI in healthcare and it comes to cardiology, now we have some devices which we implant in the heart, they are so intelligent because of AI, the machine learning and uh, internet of things, they automatically can plan the therapy. So someone who has having in, intractable arrhythmias uh, and, and once the device gives a shock, now the device itself knows that we are giving delivering a shock and if it doesn't work we are going to do this because it does not work because certain parameters which device can learn from the patient's electrical activity. So these highly sophisticated things are happening and AI is really you know making huge changes and it's so rewarding for patients and so gratifying for us to see our patients getting better because of AIs. So and we see a kind of a usefulness of AI you know multifold in coming future as well. Sir, in your experience what future technologies do you believe will shape the landscape of the cardiac care? What role do you believe minimally invasive procedures will play in the future of cardiology? I think uh, India is a country where we have uh, you know seen trends from bypass surgery changing to angioplasty and uh, now there is a new trend what is called uh, the you anyone everyone is aware about open heart procedures open heart surgeries where we just cool, open the chest expose the heart go and cut uh, take out the previous valves deploy the new valves and come out so now all these things are done are being done percutaneously you don't need to open your chest you can go through groin you can go through other access and you can deliver a new valve inside the disease valves or you can go through uh, the uh, you know a peripheral vasculature get into the heart and there, if there is a leak which is severe and your surgeon is not able to do a procedure open heart because of risk factors patient is very sick 
then you can clip that, clip those leaks and leaks can be uh, controlled and patient becomes better. So, these are real real good advancements and uh, we are looking at this front that this will further as you know uh, get refined and because of the cost issues and uh, it is you know getting used by less number of patients at this moment in spite of having hospitals with infrastructure facilities less number of patients are getting this facility availed. So, uh, what I feel is number of companies making these devices are increasing each month and each year I tell you. So, uh, USA has only three companies uh, valve devices, but in India seven companies are available you can can you can you can you imagine that situation do we two decades earlier it is something unimaginable going on in this front especially healthcare in India and to be precise cardiovascular care in India. Seven companies are making transcatheter valves and that is going to bring the cost of these devices further lower down which will be I think these are not far when government schemes can you know enable patients to get these devices to be used and 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 those were the days I think these these are the days which we are waiting for and it will be a huge revolution in the world Indian companies will be guiding the show and they are now getting more and more kind of uh, resourceful because of uh, thriving business and they are now venturing into research work and that is a really uh, kind of a, uh, again a, a point where we see India can be a leader in healthcare because once innovation happens the world will look at you. Yes, India is innovating and innovation comes only by infrastructure, resources and good manpower and there is no lack of human resources in India, quality manpower we have enough infrastructures are being made. The uh, last thing which was required was resources is now getting available with our companies thanks to Indian government and, and the all the governments uh, for helping the industry, helping the doctors, innovators to come forward and, and, and bring this change. We have seen with the increasing of global prevalence of cardiovascular disease, how do you balance between advanced interventions and preventive cardiology in your practice? Yes, yeah, so uh, the, the statistics is really staggering around half a billion of patients globally they have cardiovascular illness and around 20 million deaths happening annually worldwide because of cardiovascular problems. So, it is a huge huge number. So, we cannot just uh, you know look sideways and do only intervention and we cannot talk about prevention. So, every hospital has its preventive cardiology wing and then in any you know talk show in any uh, uh, social front we talk more of prevention than the advanced therapies. So, there is that is how we are balancing that because uh, Benjamin Franklin told in 1700 you know 17th century 18th century rather that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So, uh, if you you know if you are aware about the problems and the risk factors you can prevent your cardiac disease. I tell you death of K K was preventable, death of Raju Srivastava was preventable. These young young you know uh, uh, talents, uh, we lost them because of cardiovascular problem, heart attacks and, and, and only the time was the factor. If they could have reached the hospital 15, 20 minutes before, then they would have been you know still performing, still uh, you know be, being with us. So, time is very important, this awareness uh, about the risk factor, we none of us are immune to cardiovascular illness, anyone can be having heart attack anytime. So, this kind of thinking process that it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. So, we should not be uh, uh, kind of uh, relaxed that I am resourceful, I am I am fit, so I will not have heart attack and if anything happens okay, I can, I can take time, it, it does not go th that way. So, anyone howsoever fit he looks to be, he has to be you know concerned about his uh, lifestyle his uh, smoking habits, alcohol habits, uh, his diet what he is going to take, what he is taking day to day activity, his body weight, everything he has to be aware about that and that there lies the importance of awareness and preventive cardiology. Sir, there is two questions. How do you approach integrating cutting edge research with clinical practice? What 
current research initiatives you would like to share with our audience? So, to be very honest with you, uh, research in India was you know it, it, we cannot compare what is happening in outside world as compared to you know what, ha what is happening to India, because we are at a very nascent stage of research activity in healthcare. So, what all we had produced till now is just our registry work, our experience and all, but there is no general a very concrete basic research work is was lacking. But thankfully, for last one decade as I you know told earlier, things are changing, more of proper infrastructures are being sent, are being set up and, and uh, kind of this awareness of research activities has become more and more in uh, you know uh, the faculties, the professionals and uh, um, uh, government is funding, companies have got some resources, any institution is now keeping some budget for research activities. So, now we will see in next one or two decade India to be moving in the same league maybe, and, and that is where uh, the challenge is and that is where every hospital, every institute in India who is doing good work, he is uh, struggling to uh, give some good innovate innovations and research activities. So, we are also committed to bring something and uh, we have been part of uh, uh, multi, multi center you know large randomized control trials. We are uh, also part of uh, some real good registry work and we are also uh, you know accumulating and keeping our data records and uh, in ethical manner we are bringing up some research activities. So, research has to go on if we have to uh, being seen as a leader in you know healthcare in world and, and the direction which we have taken you know it uh, convincingly convincingly tell, telling us that we can achieve that provided we go in the same pace and increase and you know work more delicately cardiovascular research is rapidly evolving in stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine what are your views on its developments in terms of potential to revolutionary treatment for heart failure and other chronic conditions? So, it has been there in news, it is it really stimulates all of us that if gene therapy becomes successful everything will be, it will cure most of the problems and all. But unfortunately in cardiovascular disease and uh, you know uh, kind of heart failure and all the research on stem cell has not been that gratifying and promising because of the uh, problems like arrhythmias. So, with these uh, cells which are regenerating, they are not this exactly same and they are not working in the you know in tandem with the cells which are already there. So, they can generate some arrhythmias and all. So, that was the main problem. So, heart has an electrical system, heart has a mechanical system, heart has a you know it is it is a kind of a mixture of so many things uh, you know heart is a complex machine I tell you. So, a, anywhere anything which comes new and functions can create some problem and that is where stem cell therapy is still you know not been able to stand and and, 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 and being noted. So, uh, it is just a concept at this moment some work which was which was happening they are uh, uh, you know still to uh, give us more results. So, that it is it can be you know utilized and seen as therapy of future, but definitely some uh, gene therapy working on atherosclerosis, where the uh, increase in bad cholesterol can cause atherosclerosis, which causes narrowing of the heart vessels and that can cause ischemia and finally, cardiovascular ischemic heart disease heart attacks. So, there there is some kind of gene silencing and gene editing is being be you know worked upon and let us see what comes in future, but at this moment gene therapy although it looks very promising it has been 30 40 30, I think 25 30 years of research already done, but nothing uh, yet is uh, you know has come conclusively. Sir your take on this, this is the last question that I am going to ask to you. Sir based on your extensive experience in healthcare industry would you like to share any message with our viewers out there they would love to hear from you. So, the last message uh, uh, what I you would like to share with all my viewers is uh, uh, one should be aware about the prevention as all what we uh, you know just uh, discussed uh, prevention is the key. And uh, the final message I want to tell is now we have uh, 
answers for most of the cardiac problems provided patient comes to us in time and uh, it should be acted upon right from the beginning right when you are young not when you are old and second is we can fix up most of our cardiac problems provided you come and see us in time so we have support system we have devices once you reach a hospital in time even if you feel that nothing can be done we can do many things and we can revert back your cardiac function and then fix it so don't waste time and see your cardiologist as early as possible this is my final message to everyone this is dr dilip kumar we would like to thank him on behalf of business connect the way he gave us time thank you sir and the way we learned from him that in cardiology time is the most important factor you come early to the doctor he can do wonders with you 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 take your time you are going to be in problem so thank you sir thank you thank, thank you for being with us thank you thank you